Hi, I'm Katie with Picture the Magic, and today I'm going to teach you how to make a personalized water bottle using the Cricut Maker Machine or one of the Cricut Explore family machines. For this project, you will need a water bottle of your choice, two different colors of permanent vinyl, a light grip cutting mat, a weeder and scraper, transfer tape, a paper trimmer, and rubbing alcohol and a cotton ball or cotton pad. The first thing we need to do is open up a new project. Again, that's that blank tile over here on the left side that says new project. Click on that and you'll see a brand new canvas for you to start designing on. Along the left hand side of your screen, you can see all the different types of things that you can add into your design. Text, images, uh, pictures from your own computer. We're gonna click on images, that's about halfway down. Since I've already purchased the castle, there are two ways that I can find it. The first one, which you would use if you had not purchased the castle, is by selecting categories up here on the top towards the right hand side of your screen. And then you would scroll down, find Disney, click on that, and use the search bar up at the top right to search for the castle. From there, I could select this beautiful fuchsia castle. Then I'd be able to insert it into my canvas. But I want to show you how to find an image the shortcut way if you've already purchased it. So let's say I just opened up images and I see this first page. I can go over here to filter at the far right hand upper corner and then choose purchased from the drop down menu. And there's my castle. So select that and then insert images, that green button at the bottom right of your screen. There's a couple things I need to adjust. First, I want to change the color. I'm going to be doing this on black vinyl. So where you see that fuchsia square up at the top towards the left, click on that and then select black. I also want to get rid of these window cutouts. I just prefer the solid black shape, but if you like the windows, by all means, skip this step. So to get rid of these windows, at the bottom right hand corner, you see contour. I'm gonna click on that. This shows us all the different individual cuts that make up the image of the castle. So I want to leave that outline of the castle, the first one you see, I want to leave that unselected so that it will cut that. And then all of these tiny window pieces that I do not want to cut, I'm going to select them by clicking on them. As I click on them, you can see that on the image of the castle on the left side, they are actually disappearing. Once I've selected them all, I hit hide all contours and then I can close out of this window. I also need to adjust the size. The water bottle I'm using is very tall and very skinny. So before I started, I used my measuring tape to kind of measure what I thought the maximum width would be that I'd be able to see. And I decided my castle should be two and a half inches wide. So to do that precisely and quickly, up in the top middle where you see size, I'm just going to type 2.5 for the width. And because I left that lock closed, so it is locked, it'll change the height for me. Now I need to add my name. So on the left hand side, click text, and then you would type in whatever name you're using. Today I'm typing in Alicia because I'm making the water bottle for Alicia. So select Alicia, and then we're gonna change our font. So that's up at the top left side. You see a drop down menu that says Cricut Sans. This font that I'm using today is called Babette. So here at search fonts, we're going to start to type in Babette. Oops, it would help if I spelled it right. So here's Babette, click on that. And then there it gives us our font. I'm not making this black, so we want to change the color up at the left hand side and we're going to make it red. Okay, I'm just gonna move this higher up on my screen so I can see it better. The next thing that I need to do is ungroup these letters. So I can do that either up here on the right hand side uh, by clicking ungroup, or I can just right click and select ungroup. And then I'm going to drag the letters together to position them where I want them to be. 
And where this is such a cursive creative font, um, I don't have to get them in any exact right place. So wherever looks good to me is where I'm going to place them. I'm not too worried about them being perfectly aligned, you know, from top to bottom or side to side or anything like that. Um, so you're going to adjust them. One thing I do want to change as I'm looking at this, this, what's supposed to be the big A, is one of the smaller letters. So I'm just going to select it and then drag it bigger until it's about a size that looks good to me. A quick note, when you're applying vinyl to tumblers or water bottles, it will stick a lot better and it will hold up better if it's one bigger cut of vinyl as opposed to a bunch of little ones, which is why a script font works much better than your classic typed font that has all the letters separately. So I don't want this A to be by itself, so I'm going to drag it until it just butts up against the L. Okay, I am happy with the placement of all of these letters, so I'm going to use my mouse to drag over them and select them all. And now we are going to weld. I can do that either by right clicking and going down to weld, or I can do that at the bottom right side near where I found contour, I can click on weld. Perfect. All right, I want to make this three inches wide, so I'm gonna change the width to three inches and then I'm gonna drag it over here on top of my castle. I'm gonna place it where there's that big, thick, solid black because I think it'll help the letters pop the best. So I've placed it on my castle, now I just wanna line them up in centers. So drag your mouse to select both the text and the image, and then a line up in the top middle, click that and choose center horizontally from the drop-down menu. Okay, perfectly aligned. Now we're ready to make it. So up here at the top right corner, that green button, I'm gonna hit make it. And on this screen, because I'm doing two different colors, it knows that I need two different mats. I also see that the first mat it's going to cut is black, so I need to make sure that I load my black first, and then the second one it's going to cut is red. And again, it shows you the placement of the cut on that sheet. So hit continue. Once it recognizes your machine, we need to select the material that we are cutting. Click Browse All Materials, and here you can see all these different types. I'm gonna go to Categories, click the drop-down menu, and select Vinyl. Different vinyls have different thicknesses, um, need to be cut with different pressure, things like that. So we want to choose the most specific to the vinyl that we're actually using so that we get the best cut. So today I'm using premium outdoor vinyl. Click on that. You'll see the little check mark next to it and then I can hit done. It wants me to make sure that I have loaded my tools in my mat and then it'll tell me to press go on my Cricut. To prepare your mat, simply place your vinyl right side up onto the mat using the grid lines as your guide. Smooth out any wrinkles or bubbles in the vinyl. Then place your mat under the mat guides. Hold it gently and press the load button. This will pull it into the machine. Your maker will take just a minute to recognize it and then as soon as you see that go light start blinking, it's ready to cut. Go ahead and press it. When the maker is finished cutting your first piece of vinyl, press the unload button and remove the vinyl mat. Then repeat with your second color. Use a paper trimmer or scissors to cut the vinyl around your design. Use your weeding tool to peel back the vinyl from around the outside of your design. Repeat this with both pieces. If you have a Cricut Bright Pad, this will make seeing the cuts much easier. Gently pick out the vinyl from the inside of any loops or letters. Peel back the backing off of the clear transfer tape and lay it on your flat surface. Place the vinyl right side down onto the tape. Then use your scraper to firmly and gently press it into the adhesive tape. Using scissors or a paper trimmer, cut off the excess tape. 
Using some rubbing alcohol and a cotton pad, clean the side of your water bottle. Let it dry for a few minutes, and then peel the backing off of your vinyl. Place it where you would like on your water bottle and smooth it from the inside going out. I like to do this with my fingers first and then with a scraper. Peeling off the transfer tape requires a little bit of patience. Gently peel it back, pressing against the water bottle and pulling at a 180 degrees. If any vinyl pulls up as you go, which it probably will, gently press it down with the finger and then continue slowly pulling it off. Use your scraper from the inside out to smooth your vinyl. Then repeat this process with the name, placing it on top of the castle where you would like it to be. Smooth it gently with your fingers and then with the scraper. Then slowly apply firm pressure and peel the transfer tape backwards, pressing it into the water bottle as you drag it at an angle. Make sure the vinyl doesn't pull up. Smooth it with your finger and you're done.